would like to remind persons when patronizing businesses to abide by the following COVID-19 guidelines to protect employees, customers, and our community. Urge employers to check employees and customers with a non-contact head thermometer on arrival to a business place. It's mandatory that employees wear a face mask when at work and in the presence of others. No customers will be permitted to enter an establishment without a face mask. Encourage both employees and customers to wash their hands with soap and water or sanitize their hands with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer of at least 60% alcohol when entering a building, after interacting with customers and throughout the day. Remember to maintain six feet physical and social distancing. Consider installing barriers such as sneeze guards or partitions in high traffic areas to limit close contact between employees and customers. Clean and disinfect highly touched surfaces such as doorknobs, telephones, cash registers, bathrooms, tables and countertops regularly throughout the day. Offer e-commerce services or curbside pickup options wherever possible. Encourage good hygiene practices among staff and customers by posting signs and posters in the business place. For more information and tips to consider, visit www.covid19.gov.kn. We are all in this together. And we all have a part to play to keep our island COVID free. Play your part and stay safe and healthy. Our borders will soon be reopened. Get ready. So what are you doing to keep saying it's COVID free? The same thing to fix in for the island though. Season's greetings to everyone listening, whether you're at home or abroad. My name is Jacqueline Bryan. I am the host for this evening's Leadership Matters. And it's been quite a few weeks since we last aired a live st uh, staging of the program, but we could not end the year without officially signing off with you. And so here we are tonight to have this discussion. We have several members of parliament who are here, and it's quite fitting because we recently had the budget debates wrapping up in Parliament. So, 
quite a number of things to talk about and quite a number of messages to be shared with you because joining Prime Minister Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris this evening are Deputy Prime Minister Sean Richards and the Honorable Akila Byron Nisbet. So this evening, without further ado, we are going to begin and get right into the program because I know you've been anticipating it for quite some time and we're going to start with Deputy Prime Minister Sean Richards, the Honorable Sean Richards. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to begin with Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, who hosts the program, usually on a weekly basis. Prime Minister. Thank you very much, Jackie, and I want to extend season greetings to you, to all our listeners and viewers, and to thank those who have been with us since we started this program earlier in the year, and we have continued right up to the week of Christmas. So I want to say thanks for that and to thank our well-wishers abroad and at home for using this particular medium as an avenue in which to get factual information about government policies, government programs. And I am happy that tonight I have with me the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Sean Richards, who is also the elected member for St. Christopher Five, and with me tonight also is our Minister of Health et al., the Honorable Akila Byron Nisbet. She is also the elected member for St. Christopher Three. Jackie is right in that it would be very much amiss if we were to not come back to bid all our viewers, all who take part in this particular program, all the very best for the Christmas season and of course a happy new year when it comes. 2020 will long be remembered as one of the most, one of the most challenging years in living memory. We started a year and bam, we had the COVID-19 pandemic, which has taken over our lives, have changed the way in which we do things, and for the foreseeable future, we'll continue to do things. Across the world, over a million persons have died as a result of this pandemic. And across the world, there are now news of a new strain of the COVID-19 uh, disease. And so, here in St. Kitts and Nevis, despite the extremely difficult period that we have had to adjust to, we have quite a lot to give God thanks for. So tonight and for the rest of our lives, we are grateful first of all for life. We are grateful that here, this small island of St. Kitts and Nevis, this small country, has been able to manage the COVID-19 pandemic in such a manner that, by and large, we have had better results than most countries. We are happy that at this time, we have no deaths in St. Kitts and Nevis. And though we are concerned by every addition to the confirmed cases, as it is within the hemisphere, we have one of the lowest rate of infection of COVID-19. We are still considered a lowest jurisdiction. We, earlier this week, indeed only yesterday, wrap up the debate and the budget for 2021. And the good news coming out of that is that we have quite a number of projects to be implemented that should lead to improvement in the employment situation, higher incomes being paid, and St. Kitts and Nevis moving on a part of growth. The IMF has projected that we will go by about 8%, the ECCB by just about 6%, and our own statistical department says 5%. The direction is in the right one. We are hoping by some of the very good news that we have had recently that we will see an even stronger performance of the economy, which many good things happening for all of our people. Today I had the honor of participating in the groundbreaking of the TDC group of companies 
Dewar's residential development. This is going to be a middle income to high income development. Mr. Earl Kelly, the chairman, promises that it will be one of the best residential projects that TDC would put together. And the expected construction should start in early January. In the parliament yesterday, I also announced that good things were happening for the St. Kitts Brewery and that for this year again, they reach another milestone by the end of November when they had produced over one million cases of brewery product. The good news coming out of that particular historic development, this is their best year ever, is that they have been able to penetrate the external market. And this speaks then to the competitiveness of our St. Kitts Brewery. And we are happy that we are emerging as one of the market leader in brewery products. One of the market leaders in brewery products in the region. So that is good news. The breweries have also advised that next year they will start the construction of a $3 million facility expanding their warehouse, building new labs, building new offices, because the future prospects are indeed bright. So I believe the more good news we have, the better for all of us. I feel very good about these two important developments, local people taking initiative, local people doing well. We give God thanks for all that we have accomplished so far, and we look forward to a stronger and safer future. And that note again, thank you very much for viewing in. And of course, my very best wishes to all our citizens and residents, and indeed the well-wishers of St. Kitts and Nevis. Do have a very enjoyable season. Play safe in relation to all your activities. Remember COVID-19 is still very much a clear and present danger to all of us. Thank you. And thank you so much, Mr. Prime Minister. Indeed, it has been quite a unique year and we do have a lot to be thankful for. So next we move on to, now we move on to the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Sean Riches. Good evening to everyone. It is my pleasure to be back here on Leadership Matters. It has been quite a few weeks since I've last been here as such, I take the opportunity to thank the Honourable Prime Minister for having me here this evening. I also acknowledge the presence of my colleague, the Honourable Akila Byron Nisbet. As indicated, we would have had our budget debate during the course of last week and it was finalised yesterday, Monday. I took the opportunity then to speak to the ministry that I have responsibility for. That is the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Post and Urban Development. During my presentation, I would have outlined to the citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis is some of the achievements made by the ministry during the course of 2020 and some of the intended plans for the year 2021. For those who may not have been listening, I will now outline some of those projects which were achieved during 2020 and which we intend to put into effect during the course of 2021. Relative to the postal services, we are looking at the digitalization of the postal services. That is for customers utilizing the services offered by the various post offices throughout St. Kitts. We intend to digitalize it to the extent that persons are able to get receipts digitally and basically all operations of the post office will be done digitally. As it is when you use the postal services, almost everything that is offered to you is done manually. During the course of 2021, we hope to change that and we have already identified a software developed right here within the region uh, that we will be commissioning at the post offices around St. Kitts. I also spoke to the fact uh, that we recognize that within a number of communities, you have houses being built and this is offering some difficulties for our postmen in terms of 
it being able to access these homes, it be it due to dogs, it be it to where, due to where the homes are built, etc. As such, we intend to offer cluster boxes to a number of housing communities throughout St. Kitts. That will make the service far more efficient, not only for the customers of the post office, but also for the hard-working staff of the post office. We also intend to evaluate the services offered by the general post office to see how we can improve the services offered. 2020 has been a very difficult year for the general post office. COVID-19 has affected the operations in many different ways. In particular, incoming flights to the Federation were halted and as such, mails coming from different areas of the world were not being received. Now that the airport has been reopened, we are hoping that our customers will be able to receive their mails on a more efficient basis. I now turn to the Ministry of, well, let me say to public infrastructure, which is part of the ministry. And when persons hear public infrastructure, normally they think of a public works. However, public infrastructure has a several different divisions to it. You have the quarry services, for example. You have the maintenance of government buildings. You have the supervision and administration of government contracts. You have repair of government vehicles. Some of the projects that we intend to undertake in 2021 would be the continuation of the traffic signals throughout the Basti area in particular. There are a number of new sites which have been identified for traffic lights. Some of these sites are the Bay Road in the vicinity of College Street Gut and Social Security. In the vicinity of Port Zante and the Rams Supermarket on the Bay Road. We are also looking at College Street Gut and Kayan Street and also the junction of College Street Gut and the junction of College Street Gut and also Kayan Street. So there are two different areas in that particular vicinity. We are also looking at the bottom of Sandown Road and the Bay Road and the final place that we are looking at for the installation of traffic signals would be the junction where you have TDC Auto Division and Rams Cash and Carry or that area entering onto the Boardwalk Road. We expect that by the end of January of next year we would see the complete installation of those new traffic signals. During the course of 2020, a number of projects were supervised by the department. For example, you have had the Malfell building which is being used by the explorers and that was completed at a cost of 2.4 million EC dollars. The community center in Lodge, that is a project also supervised by the Public Works Department and completed at a cost of $3.2 million. Next to the Saw Lee Llewellyn Moore Judicial Complex, the annex, which was the building that once housed the electoral office, that has now been renovated and remodeled and so it's supposed to be used now as a magistrate court and a mediation center. The Honorable Attorney General in his own remarks would have indicated that one of the things that we hope to do there is to have family court and also traffic court is so that those matters are not necessarily tied up at the other magistrate courts in the main building. We are also looking at introducing night courts so that persons who have to work during the course of the day will not have to take time off from work to do such, but instead attend night court as that might be more convenient for some persons and certainly from an employer standpoint, at least it reduces the number of persons away from work and so efficiency and output would be improved. That particular building was completed at a cost of 2.7 million dollars. In my own constituency we have been supervising the construction of the brand new Sandy Point police station at a cost of some 0.60 million dollars. 
for 2021, we have been asked to take over the construction of the police training complex in the Limekeel area. And so we are looking at the plans, etc., so that we are in a position to be able to undertake the construction of or completion of that particular project. Of course, some of the ongoing projects include the Island Main Road project. Work has substantially been completed on that project. During 2021, we will see the final stages of that project, uh, which would be the completion of the road between the Stone Fort area uh, down to as far as Godwin Gut, and then between Godwin Gut and well, not between Godwin Gut, but more so between New Guinea and the Sandy Point area. Within the Sandy Point area, which is the area we expect to do last, we are going about changing the water lines there. Some of that work has already begun, uh, but in terms of the main water lines, uh, those we expect to start changing out during the course of 2021. Uh, that project has been quite an extensive project. It has involved building sidewalks in a number of communities, changing the water main lines in a number of other communities. You have had the introduction of roundabouts in some communities, such as in the Malinu area. You have had the realignment of the main road in some area, and in other areas you have had the reconstruction of bridges. It is also being done in collaboration with some of the other utility providers here in the Federation, such as the cable and flow, because they too, and the electricity department skeleton, because they too, they have underground um, lines. We have had the rehabilitation of the old road bay uh, that continues. Uh, that project has had some delays, partly due to COVID-19 and partly due to the fact that the contractor has had some difficulties uh, with the mining of the 10 ton rocks from the quarry. Roads have been built in a number of different communities such as Con Phipps and Harry Phipps in Half Ritchie, Matinley Heights, you have at the Malview and Parkview area in Malinu, and also Gavi's Westland, which is West Farm. We intend to construct a number of other roads in different communities throughout the course of 2021. Now, when COVID-19 began affecting the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, some persons perhaps surmised eh, that the capital projects being undertaken by government would come to a halt. However, eh, because of the fact eh, that we have been able to utilize the financial resources of the government quite eco economically, we have been able to continue the capital projects and as you would have noted thus far, it is our intention to implement a number of new capital projects. Some of the new ones would include the rock revetment in the areas of Irish Town, the areas of Fort Lands, and also in the New Guinea area, or should I say when you leave New Guinea and more heading into Sandy Point just below Brimstone Hill, where the seawater in particular has been causing severe erosion of the coastline. Ongoing projects which we also expect to come and stream in 2021 include the New Bastia High School campus, the St. Peter's Health Center. We are about 15% complete in terms of the construction of that health center in the St. Peter's area. You have the Tabernacle Playfield Pavilion that is about 65% completed. We have the St. Mary's Park Bleachers. I think that should be just about completed by now. You have the cath lab at the JNF hospital. The design phase for that is ongoing. You have the retrofitting of the former CNC building, which is supposed to become an administrative area for the Ministry of Legal Affairs, and that is almost 95% completed. So quite a number of extensive works being undertaken by the Public Works Department. Of course, we also have the Old Road Fisheries Complex 
and we expect to be doing the construction of some slips during the course of 2021. The energy unit within the ministry has also been actively engaged in a number of different projects. Just about two weeks ago, we had the groundbreaking ceremony for the solar farm. We said during the groundbreaking ceremony that that solar farm is supposed to be the biggest within the Caribbean region. It is supposed to generate approximately 35 megawatts per hour of energy and supplies Kelec with approximately 16 to 18 megawatts. The geothermal project which we are looking at, that is still ongoing. Recently, we would have reached out to CDB to assist us with a consultant in terms of some of the legal work which is needed for that project. There is a wind farm project which we have been looking at. That partly came to a halt because of COVID-19 and so early in 2021, we expect the continuation of that project so that it can come on stream. The Waste Energy Project, that is a project that is being discussed with Solid Waste Management Corporation. There is a proposal for a desalination plant to be constructed in the area of Keys. Recently, we would have gone out to tender in terms of the EIA for that particular project. It is supposed to be partly powered by solar, and as a result of that, we expect Skellic and the consumers here in St. Kitts to benefit from such. There is a currently an LED lighting project being undertaken. Persons would recognize that on the public roads in particular, the street lighting has improved. Uh, that project also has a component which is going to involve a number of different play fields around the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis because it is a project for both St. Kitts and Nevis. We have been having for quite some time negotiations in terms of getting some electric school buses. Uh, that project is still ongoing and we are hoping that by 2021 persons will actually see those electric school buses transporting our school children. So those are some of the projects coming from the energy unit. We have had training of some 42 persons during the course of 2020 in collaboration with the OECS and the Caribbean Development Bank to teach persons right here in St. Kitts and Nevis about the installation of solar panels. We have also been conducting a greenhouse gas inventory uh, that is substantially completed. There's still some more work to be done on that project and we're hoping that in 2021 we will be able to complete it. I will end my opening remarks here. You would note that I haven't spoken as yet to urban development, uh, but I suppose during the rest of the program I will get the opportunity to uh, do so. And of course, water services. I know that a number of persons throughout the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis are concerned about the generation of water. In particular, it has been an ongoing issue in the Kayan area. I am happy to report this evening uh, that this week we actually signed off on the contract in terms of the exploration for water in the Kayan area. Uh, that contract was signed with Bead. Bead is a company which has done work here. It is the very same company uh, which would have done the wells in Shadwell, that is Shadwell 1 and Shadwell 2. Yes, we have had some difficulties with bringing Shadwell 2 online because of the quality of the water. The contract that was signed with Bead during the course of this week also makes provision uh, for the water quality for Shadwell 2 to be improved. Once the water quality there has been improved, we will ensure uh, that the people in particular of St. Peter's have access to more water. In the interim, that particular well should also bring temporary relief to the people of Kayan because by feeding the water to the St. Peter's area, we will also be able to feed more water to the people of Kayan. Thank you. And thank you so much, Deputy Prime Minister.
quite a comprehensive update you've given us there and you're not yet done. That's one of the benefits of listening to parliament debates because you get to hear all the things that the ministries and departments have been doing throughout the year and some of the plans for the new year. So we are thankful for that. We move on next to the Honorable Akila Byron Nisbet. Thank you very much, Jackie. Good evening and season's greetings to all who are viewing and listening. I know there are persons who tune in every Tuesday to Leadership Matters and we are grateful that you continue to do so to hear more about what your government is doing. As you know, our Prime Minister is very much into making sure that the, go the people understand that the government is their government and that you know everything that's happening within the government. You keep informed you keep abreast so that there is no question or doubt. I would like to just say good evening to the Prime Minister and thank him for having me here on another episode of Leadership Matters and to the Deputy Prime Minister as well. We've had quite a few week, well, a few days rather, a week and one day of Parliament this week as we try to finalize the budget and we pass the budget rather. This being my first time actually seeing the budget from start to finish. Previously, I would come in at the tail end when it's time for a presentation, but this time around I was able to see the entire budgeting process and recognize the importance of our democracy and the way in which we do what we do in able to determine how we move forward each year and the type of activities and the type of programs that will take priority within the various ministries. And so I was very pleased to be part of the entire process this year. I've spoken quite a bit about the projects that are taking place within the Ministry of Health as well as the new ministry. However, tonight I would still like to highlight some items from within the Ministry of Health as well as within the new ministry and the Ministry of Technology. I, the major capital projects in particular within the Ministry of Health that we have coming down the pipeline for 2021. We would have heard the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister with Responsibility for Public Infrastructure speak to the construction and ongoing work with the construction of the new health center in St. Peter's. St. Peter's is a huge community and quite a number of individuals access and uses the services of the health center. The health center there, it was in no shape to continue to work and be able to be fit for purpose as the community continues to grow and so the government and the ministry in particular thought that it was important for us to be able to give that community a state-of-the-art health center that would be able to meet the needs of the individuals and so as the deputy prime minister would have indicated we are about 15 percent completed i'm pleased with the work that have been done thus far and working alongside the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, we are assured that this project will be done in a manner that is acceptable and one that the community will appreciate and will be in a, make it a more comfortable environment for them to access the health services. One of the other projects that we will be embarking on is, as the Deputy Prime Minister indicated as well, is the cath lab. As many of you know, our main issue, one of our biggest issues and problems and health problems within St. Kitts and Nevis is our non-communicable diseases, diabetes, hypertension. Now, in terms of a cath lab, that is where we'll be able to do minor heart surgeries and be able to put catheters in a person's um, heart so persons don't have to travel overseas to get that type of treatment some minor surgeries will be able to be conducted here in St. Kitts and Nevis at the cath lab so I am looking forward to that cath lab as I know there are many persons who do need that type of assistance many who have traveled abroad for that assistance some didn't even know how they'll be able to pay their way and so now to have that here in St. Kitts that will definitely be a plus to our health system. We will also be looking at 
the phase three project of the JNF hospital. The drawings have already been, well, we're in the process of getting our drawings completed, and that would be to make sure we have the area within the back of the hospital. That's where you find the, the pathology lab and the central medical stores and the kitchen and the laundry area. Make sure those are at standard and that they are a comfortable environment for our, the work, the persons who do their work in those areas of the hospital as well as ensure that we provide top service to all of our patients and anybody who come within the care of the hospital in terms of the central medical stores in particular the space that that area have is no longer able to accommodate the amount of um, medical supplies that we require and so we are going to make sure that the central medical stores have enough space so that we'll be able to store enough of our medical supplies be it pharmaceutical or otherwise the laundry area the kitchen area even the central sterilization unit will also be looked at when we upgrade into the phase three of the JNF General Hospital. There will also be some work done to try to improve or upgrade the carding home because we understand that our elderly should be comfortable and so we are going to make sure that we begin the design process to upgrade and to add more onto the Cardin home. Anybody who lives in that vicinity or visits that vicinity regularly know that there's enough space where we can be able to expand the Cardin home as it is right now. We do not have enough space in the Cardin home to be able to house all of the elderly who may need that type of assistance and families who require that type of assistance. So we're going to see how best we will be able to do that for our families in need. One of the things that I did not mention, however, as it relates more specifically to COVID-19 is the fact that one of the things that we are trying to implement as well at the JNF hospital is a PCR molecular testing unit within JNF that would allow us to be able to do testing for COVID-19 right at our facilities at the JNF hospital. We understand that as we begin to open up our country, even while we are now completely open, but as more flights be begin to come in and more persons try to visit St. Kitts or even leave St. Kitts because you also have to get tested before you can board any commercial flight, it's going to be important for us to increase the testing capacity that we have in St. Kitts and Nevis. At the moment, we have to thank the Next Gen Lab for the work that they have been doing as one of the only labs, well, not one of, but rather the only lab that does the testing right now. They have been doing a great and fantastic job and we thank them for that but we understand that the capacity needs to be increased and so right in JNF we will have our own PCR molecular testing unit which we hope to be able to deliver by early 2021 we have already done most of the work that needs to get done there's just some minor stuff that we still need to complete but we would like to be able to have that up and running by early 2021 one of the things that I've been receiving quite a bit of questions on is the vaccine. And many persons wondering if St. Kitts and Nevis will be able to access vaccine. I know we've been seeing in the news in places like the United States and the United Kingdom, they have given emergency use authorization for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. And persons are asking, would we be able to have access to those vaccines? What I would say is that I think many of us would have remembered the Prime Minister in particular, as well as myself, speaking about the fact that St. Kitts and Nevis have joined or invested in a COVAX facility. The COVAX facility is where a number of countries would have pooled their resources together to invest in over 15 pharmaceutical companies, helping them to be able to develop the vaccines and be able to distribute vaccines. The aim was to reach about 2 billion doses of a vaccine that would be able to be shared among all 190 participating countries. St. Kitts and Nevis would have made a down payment and a deposit towards being able to have at least 20% of our population vaccinated once that vaccine 
comes into play through the COVAX facility. I am pleased to say that we've been informed that the COVAX facility will be able to provide us with vaccines again by early next year, early 2021. They are looking at somewhere around March of 2021 or sometime within the second half of 2021. And we are happy that we've made the investment that we made because we know that it's important that we keep our own citizens safe. And so we're looking forward to when the, the facility determines that they have enough vaccines, one, and the vaccines are effective in fighting and safe for individuals to be able to use. Once they receive the amount necessary to be able to distribute to all 190 countries, St. Kitts and Nevis will be part of that as well. And so we're just awaiting for the confirmation on when we will be able to receive our first batch of the vaccine. There have also been some questions of persons wondering if I were vaccinated in the US or the UK, would I still have to go into quarantine? The answer to that is yes. Even if you have been vaccinated before coming to St. Kitts or Nevis, yes, you would still have to be quarantined for 14 days before you will be able to integrate within the population. Why? Although the trials tell us that the vaccines have an efficacy of 90%, that is, at least 90% of the persons who would have been vaccinated with the vaccine during trials were able to fight the disease versus persons who would have been given a placebo. However, what we look for is effectiveness as well. And effectiveness is not determined until the vaccine has been in the real world setting and have been able to penetrate the real world setting and we're able to see how it actually functions in the real world setting. Remembering that with clinical trials, persons are use, they're using a control setting to determine if whether or not the vaccine will be able to perform as it should. However, it is not until it's in the real world when you're mixed with, with different com, um, persons with other illnesses or sickness or anything else or even age or whatever it is in the real world that's not the same as if it were in the clinical settings, then we can determine well how effective that drug really is. And so it's going to take some time before enough persons get vaccinated for us to determine the effectiveness. So until then, we are still going to be mandating the 14 day quarantine and so just for persons who have been asking because i have received quite a number of calls asking me if i took this vaccine would i be able to the other thing is that there are some persons who think that once they've taken that first dose or the pfizer or moderna then they're free to roam no it is a two dose vaccine which means that it would not be effective until after the second dose which is around 21 days before you can get the second dose of that vaccine so until we can determine the true effectiveness, how these vaccines react in the real world setting, we will still require you to be able to, to have to quarantine for the 14 days. So that's the information that I would like to share as it relates to the vaccine. Another question that I have been asked about is dealing with the health information system. There are persons who've heard me talk about the health information system and they're asking how exactly will this health information system work? But what the health information system is, it's basically a database that will store all of your medical information at our within our public health system. We're going to roll out the health information system first within the institutions, that is the hospital setting, Joseph and France, Mary Charles, Parkson Hospital. So once you go to the hospital, anything you, you need to go to the hospital for, 
whether it is medication, whether you are staying there, whatever it is that you're diagnosed with, all this information will be stored on um, your history, your medical history will be stored within the health information system. And so should you have to access our health system anytime again, all you would have to do is provide us with a card that you would you will be given once you first sign up for the health information system, you'll be given your medical ID, which is a card. When you present that card, you bring it to JNF. So if you, let's say you come to the hospital for service 8 o'clock in the morning, and then by 8 o'clock in the evening, you're not feeling well, you have to come back again. The shift have changed since then, and so the doctors may not know what have occurred unless they pull your charts. You have to make sure all the information that is on the charts is correct. But instead of having to pull your chart and asking you your information over and over again, you present your medical ID. That medical ID is scanned, so when you come back at 8 o'clock, the doctors are aware of what transpired in the morning when you were there at 8 it will also extend out into the community. So even if you access services at one of our health centers, all of your medical information will also be stored within the health information system. So if you leave from DFB and you go to, let's say, the Bastia Health Center, your information will be shared across the different health centers and the different health institutions. It's just a way for us to be made to allow the easy referral of patient information and easy referral of patients between institutions between the community and between the um, hospitals. And so um, that's a project that I'm looking forward to. We've already begun the retraining of staff at the hospitals, and we're hoping to be able to have that rolled out by mid next year. Apart from that, we're also embarking on a project to connect all of our health centers back to the Joseph and France General Hospital. And that project should also be started next year through the help of the Universal Service Fund. And we're grateful for having that assistance from that fund to be able to implement a network within the community that connects back to the JNF which will make our health information systems system easier to roll out. I think that was I just wanted to touch on some of the things that persons have been asking about since we've had the budget presentation. I'm not going to go into as much details as the Deputy Prime Minister did in terms of recapping what would have been discussed during the budget, but I just wanted to highlight just those few things. And I know persons are patiently waiting to ask questions. There are things that we would have discussed during the budget that you want some clarity on. And I encourage you to call in and ask your questions. That's why we're here today. That's why the Prime Minister keeps doing this program every Tuesday, so that you can get the clarity and the information that you need. So you don't have to question what is your government doing. Your government comes to you and tells you every time we hear on a Tuesday what we're doing. Because you know the Prime Minister doesn't only come alone, he brings other members of cabinet with him as well and it's just a way of keeping you informed making sure you understand the information don't get it secondhand from anybody else when you can get it straight from us you could ask your questions and get the clarif clarifications that you need and so I'm not going to go for much longer because then if you lessen the time persons have to ask questions and so with that I just want to just wish everybody again a Merry Christmas and remind persons as I, I cannot I'm not tired of doing this. I want to remind persons to follow the protocols. Wear your mask, hand sanitizing, social distancing. Those three things is what got, got us to where we are now and they will continue to be effective until pharmaceutical measures are in place, such as knowing the effectiveness, effectiveness of a vaccine or any other type of pharmaceutical measure that can be taken. Until then, we have to remember those non-pharmaceutical measures. Wearing our mask, social distance, hand sanitizing. We are going to be tempted to be in large crowds Friday, Saturday, over the weekend. I'm encouraging persons to still be mindful of crowds, still be mindful of who you are around and what, and what you are doing. Let us remember again our borders have been open 
and persons are coming in from what are required or considered hot spots. They're staying in our hotels. Our hotels, as our hotel, those guests are serviced by individuals who continue to live in our community. So we have to bear those things in mind and try to make sure we keep ourselves safe as much as possible. And the way we will do that is through our non-pharmaceutical measures. And so with that, I would like to turn it back over to Jackie to allow everybody the opportunity to call in and ask questions. Well, with that kind of motivation, I'm expecting an abundance of calls this evening. <laughs> Thank you so much, Minister, for that. And your presentation helped to show that no one ministry works in isolation. You made reference to some projects that the Deputy Prime Minister spoke about. And it shows that there needs to be partnership between the ministries and the departments and the units in order to get all of these projects done. So clearly it takes teamwork. And you also addressed concerns and questions that were brought to your attention. Thank you so much for that, because I believe that there are persons listening who would have benefited from your answers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we are going straight to the phone lines to hear from you. Any questions you might have, any concerns, any suggestions, and maybe even if you want to share Christmas greetings. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. As we get ready to serve, it is important that we improve our vehicles to ensure the safety of our guests and ourselves. Outfit your vehicle with appropriate dividers to separate driver from passenger. Plexiglass or Velcro plastic divider may be used. Have a minimum of two hand sanitizers, one for you and one for your guests. Always carry extra mask and disinfectant in your vehicle and post signs to remind passengers to use hand sanitizers and wear their mask and follow social distancing protocols. When providing a service, it is important that the hands of the passengers are sanitized before entering the vehicle. Remember, a mask must always be worn by all occupants of the vehicle for the duration of the trip. At the end of the trip, Remember to wish your passengers a good day. Ensure they have left no personal items behind and sanitize their hands. Once you have completed your trip, remember to sanitize your hands and your vehicle. Seats must be disinfected and all high touch areas, such as doors and seat handles, must be sanitized before your next trip. Let's do all we can to keep ourselves and our visitors safe. Thanks to the nation's unified response, the spread of COVID-19 has been contained. St. Kitts and Nevis, therefore, announces the opening of their border on October 31st, 2020. The success of this strategy requires effort on everyone's part. People from all walks of life must keep practicing social distancing. Maintain a separation of six feet or two meters indoors and three to four feet or one meter outdoors. If this isn't possible, masks must be properly worn. Businesses can provide hand sanitizer, conduct temperature checks, record customers' contact information, and manage crowds. Clean and sanitize high touch areas regularly. Dividers or staggered seating can be used to maintain proper social distance. This protects workers and customers and prevents the spread of disease. We all have an individual and collective responsibility to avoid large social gatherings. These types of gatherings are deemed as super spreader events. Taking disease prevention seriously will enable a worry-free return to normal life. Thanks to the nation's unified response, the spread of COVID-19 has been contained. St. Kitts and Nevis, therefore, announces the opening of their border on October 31st, 2020. 
The success of this strategy requires effort on everyone's part. Therefore, self-health management is an important step in this process. Self-health management refers to the measures people take to manage their own health. You and I should remember to wash hands often with soap and water or use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, mouth, and nose. Take your temperature morning and evening. Watch for symptoms. Persons with diabetes or hypertension are reminded to take your medication regularly as prescribed. If you have no symptoms, you may carry out your normal routine and boost your immune system. When you are outside, avoid public spaces and wear a mask at all times. If you develop symptoms, put on a mask and seek medical care. Do not take public transportation. Inform the doctor of your travel history, any contact with confirmed or suspected cases, your occupation, and whether anyone around you has similar symptoms. If you become ill, please rest at home. Wear a mask and isolate yourself from others in your household. If you share a bathroom, disinfect daily using one part bleach to 10 parts water. Everyone must work together to reduce the spread of the coronavirus when our border has been opened. Welcome back to Leadership Matters, and this is our final program for the year, but we are excited to be here, and we can't wait to hear from you. This evening, joining the Prime Minister, our Deputy Prime Minister, Sean Richards, and the Honorable Akila Byron Nisbet. Our phone numbers are, for persons who are interested in participating, are 466-2666-662-8674-767-4765, and our international line is 1-239-645-4505. Four five zero zero, and for your convenience, those numbers are listed at the bottom of the screen. We also have a number that you can send WhatsApp messages to, and that number is six six one five six eight three. And of course, we are monitoring our social media platforms for any comments or questions that might arise there, and we will try our best to address those as well. For your convenience, the area code is 869, just in case maybe you're a, a resident or non-national who are also interested in, is also interested, sorry, in participating in the program, and you may do so. So without further ado, I believe we can go to the phone lines if we have any calls. And we can take our first caller for this evening. Okay. If you don't get in, keep trying. We will try our best to accommodate as many persons as possible. We'll go to the next call. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Um, thank you for coming on the year at, at the almost the end of the year to let us know what's going on in the country and everything is going fine. I thank the Prime Minister and his colleague and them for the budget yesterday and how we went and how we was outstanding. But the fact remains the problem about I see with the country is a lot of people ain't satisfied. Right? For what reason? I don't know. But the Prime Minister and his colleague and them, the cabinet are trying the best. So I um, hope for the coming year things will cool down. And first let me again congratulate the Prime Minister for his family taking a seat on the in the United States. As the deputy, as the deputy president. So good night, Mr. Prime Minister. God bless you and your cabinet, and all the best to you for the new year. God is always with you. Thank you. 
And thank you, sir. We'll move on to the next call. Welcome to Leadership Matters. Hello. Hello. Hi, good night. Okay, so my question is for the Prime Minister. Most recently, it stated that the United Kingdom found itself increasingly cut adrift because of the new mutant coronavirus strain, which has been spreading from the UK. Countries like Canada, France, Germany, Israel, Iran, Colombia, and Morocco suspended flights from the UK, and Saudi Arabia closed its borders and suspended all the flights, regardless of the destination. So is St. Kitts also going to be joining the list? Are we going to still be getting British Airways coming in, knowing that we have the new mutant coronavirus strain? Thank you. We'll take a number of calls and then we'll have the panelists address them, the concerns and questions. Welcome to Leadership Matters. You're live. Hi, good night. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Yes. May I ask a question, please? Sure, go ahead. Yes, um, the question I want to ask to the, the Prime Minister, um, those that who, who work for minimum wage, they can go to the bank and apply for a loan to build a house. And I want to know what is, what is, what is in the budget for young people that they want to start their own house. And, uh, and what is in the, in the budget for young people that uh, want to be empowered, like with a piece of land, uh, a house, just like for one bedroom, just to get a start because young people out there just want to start, just to be empowered. You understand? So I just want to know that if the government have things in place for the ordinary man that who on the street, like working for minimum wage, if he can able to get a one-bedroom house just to empower him, because he have young people living with their mother, young girls and young boys, would a want able to have their own place. So I want to ask the Prime Minister, that if it's something in the budget for the minimum wage worker who could be able to get a house to empower them to uplift them that's all i want to know thank you questions we'll move on to the next call welcome to leadership matters you're live hello hello good night good evening good evening to the head table mr prime minister mr richards and senator byron uh, Good night. Mr. Prime Minister, is it good for me in a digital show? Good night, sir. I, ha I have been trying to reach out to you for some time now. I mean, think it's almost two months and I can't see you yet. No, you um, saw me. You saw me. We uh, walked. We walked. Man, I, I, I see you walking on the street. I don't want to see you on the street. That's time to fight. I don't want to fight with you on the street. I want to talk to you professionally in the office. All right. All right. And the street that is that you're playing game. That's not that's not business. And I don't want I don't want I don't want to take up your time tonight either because what we have to discuss, this is not the place for it. You're gonna take up too much time. But I want to tell you I um I know you're a busy person, I've been monitoring what's going on, I know you all had the um budget and stuff to deal with. So I'm not knocking you on that. But I just want you to know Christmas is Friday. So when Christmas is over we could use Jew, but since we don't have the Jew we just yet to have our conversation. That will, that will work for you? That will work. All right. So uh, I could meet you any place, any time that you could sit down and have a conversation. I just want to say to you, I am 100% without any doubt that the government, the cabinet, and the task force might have the best interest of the country and the people at heart. But from where I am viewing from the outside, from science, from experience and common sense, there's too many inconsistencies, inconsistencies in the task force. I've seen it for myself. I have seen what's going on down at the ferry terminal. I have seen what's going on in Nevis. I got to Nevis at least twice a week. I have seen what's going on down at events where the task force is pressuring people for a little crowd. That they say they got 10 people more than they was at the rest too. But what I see up at TDC last week and up at um, Hartford, COVID does not choose where to show up. And I went over and I spoke to Mr. D'Souza 
and Sergeant Henry. And I told them, I am very disappointed as someone who been monitoring the situation from New York to St. Kitts in what is going on. So, Mr. Prime Minister, I am telling you, you might be busy and cannot be every place to see what's going on. But I have given myself the responsibility to monitor since I've been here. From the 22nd of November, I've been monitoring. And Mr. Samuels, your high command, the commissioner, I have called him on several occasions. He has not returned my call. And they might be in this position that they are civil servants and they have to understand that as much as they may have degrees for their position, there are normal local people such as myself that have experience in certain areas and are seeing things that they are not seeing. So they must listen to our voice. Don't just shut it out. The CMO promised to meet with me. I haven't seen her as yet. Um, Akila and I spoke. She told me she will set up a meeting. I have not spoke to her as yet. I brought in four key package to be given to the four hospitals. I spoke to you. I spoke to Akila. I spoke to um, P.S. Harris. The packages are still sitting here. Friday is Christmas. I need to give these things to the nurses that deserve them. I didn't bring them here to keep in my house. I bring them here to present them to the people that deserve them. So somebody need to pick up the phone and call me. My number is 660-0195. This is not about politics. It's about the country's business and our health and safety. Caller, is that it? Okay. You seem to have lost that caller, but I think his concerns are clear. And hopefully, you'll hear from someone soon. We'll move on to the next call. Welcome to Leadership Matters. Yes, good night. Good night, Honorable Timothy Harris, Honorable Sean, Honorable Akila Byron. Um, this grant, um, Honorable Harris, I want to thank you very much for the opportunity uh, you invited me to your last sitting of your budget yesterday, and the compliment that you, I mean, you gave to me, I mean, I mean, yes, it made me feel well good inside, because one, I never get invited to you know, hear budget and, you know, see the, the, the expression in everybody's face. I just want to tell you thanks very much and for acknowledging the stuff that I did towards the, the COVID. It was very, you know, pleasing. And, and, that, and that itself is a plus. Um, I won't think it's now. I just want to tell you thanks for, I mean, the people, the people of thinking. I just want to tell you thanks for giving them a government that they deserve. Thanks for the completion of, I think, the airport runway, the almost oil and main road, right? Even at the old road there, but I could have never believed that a road here could have got out some more, right? I want to say thanks for the stimulus package, although other people think that it was not, I mean, right in a sense. I know it benefits a lot, a lot of people, a lot of citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis, that stimulus package, you know, benefit them. Thanks to the school meals, that even to the COVID and lockdown, school meal was still given out. Thanks to the opening of Bearfords. Thanks for the new start of the health center in St. Peter's. And that alone, I mean, it might bring more people to St. Peter's, you know, so it's better for the, the bus drivers then. And I just want to thank two of your members them again in the health system, um, Mrs. Lars and Abby Samuel. I want to thank them very much. I mean, they was working back and forth where we had a little problem to get in my mom. Yes, I want to thank them very much for helping that situation. Thanks again for the little increment that you, 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 you give to the, the, the weekly workers. And this is one of the things that I really want to thank you for. And I know there are people out there, I mean, who benefit off of this. When you say that the senior citizens, them who come in into the country and they have to quarantine, they will not pay any $500. I want to tell you all thanks very much because my mother of one of the people, them who obtained that opportunity to not pay any $500. Um, Honorable Sean Richards, um, you said something about the post office. 
knowing that we're building a new health center in St. Peter's. Thinking about it, the old health center to, could use as a more or less outpost post office to the people them who live in the areas that the postmen, uh, well, the postman can go, so those people could pick up um, the letters them from there. That just came to mind, right? So I just wanna wish everybody in think it all before I go. Yes, one more thing. You acknowledge the support that I gave to the police officers them during the, the COVID time. Yes, I wanna I wanna thank them and all for allowing me to do such. I mean, St. Peter's, yes, I did cook for them at one point in time. And even knowing that they are present out there on the road and the sea, much less the other night are out there looking wilks after she and the coast guard showing the light on top of me, want to know who it is that, who it is that out there. It's, not, it's good to know that they are present out there. I want to thank everybody for allowing me in the house to work traffic talk listening towards the internet, wherever, out there in space or wherever, just want to tell you all thanks. Merry Christmas and do enjoy a prosperous in here. And Mrs. Byron, I just want you all to keep on your head because as from the 26th of December, Canada will be closing its borders again for 28 days. So just let's keep wearing our masks, as you are saying, and sanitize social distance, and let's move forward to make a better 2021. Thanks for having me. Thanks very much. And thank you for your participation in our program. We'll move on to the next call. Welcome to Leadership Matters. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. PM, you couldn't give the, um, this thing a better name more than Leadership Matter. You know why? About a month ago, I listened to the ex-Prime Minister saying, Le man come at the yard. Le man go at the yard. Mr. PM, let me say to you, thanks. In a work so. Because, I mean, we here in St. Kitts, we try our very best to contain this virus. I have no problem, no problem with any kids young coming home. But if he or she is coming home, they have to follow the rules and regulation. 14 days quarantine, and if he or she is okay after, he go at the yard. It tells me that if the Labour Party had won the election and Denzel Douglas were to become back the Prime Minister, we would have had chaos there in St. Kitts. Mr. PM, keep it up. Sean, this is Austin Coker. I guess I catch my voice. Please keep close to the PM and take a small page when he's not looking from his book. Because hopefully, according to him, you should or you might be leading the country shortly. And I don't want you to walk the road like Denzel Douglas, as the PM said yesterday, a drunken sailor. We had one sailor in Sandy Point, and he's now in drunk. Have a good night. You have a good night as well. We'll pause at this point just to have some responses to the calls. We also have some messages that came in via WhatsApp and questions, which we will go to once these initial responses have been given. So I, I believe it's safe to begin with um, the Prime Minister and uh, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Honorable Akila Byron Nisbet can respond accordingly. Thank you very much, Jackie. I will start with Austin Coker and thank him for calling in and of course thank him for his commendation. He raised an important matter. What would life be like for us in St. Kitts and Nevis had the Labour Party won the election? And he raised that in the context of the manner in which the leader of the opposition has been speaking with regard to our effective management of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
And in particular, this statement he made some time ago, why are we quarantining people? Why not let them go back to the yard? Well, clearly what is happening around the world now indicate that it would, be, would have been a terrible mistake. The community spread in Grenada, community spread in St. Lucia, and elsewhere in the region, in fact, say to us that we in St. Kitts and Nevis are a model we are following the science. The science dictates that there should be a 14-day period of quarantine or longer, and we are following that to a T. Our strategy from the beginning has been to save life. And save life means we have to take every precaution that is necessary to do so. And we have been following that, and we shall continue to do so. Because at the end of the day, life comes for us. And so far, we are relatively, well, in fact, within the region, we have the best performance to date, and we want to keep it that way. I want to thank Granny. Granny, yes, has done, in my view, an excellent job. As a Minister of National Security, I pay attention to the inputs we get on a number of radio programs on which the law enforcement officers are engaged. I believe that Granny has helped to bring some balance to the conversation. To her, he has done a lot to help his other um, operators of buses to become more compliant with the protocol. And I'm happy that he has been leading that particular charge and doing so with distinction. So again, please continue to do work, the good work. We are happy to have you out there being the voice of the people, the voice of those who are engaged in public transportation, but the voice of every member of the community. Through you we hear their voice, we hear their concerns, and we are happy to be able to respond. I will meet with Marisha, God's willing, and Juve, that is his preference and that perhaps is a, a good day. Um, at this time really, and I make no excuse to speak to the fact that the members of the task force are very much engaged. This weekend in particular, we had more flights into the country than we had said the last week. We had some new um, inflow in terms of the air traffic and we are happy that more persons perhaps would have come into the country but it's been very busy and every week our health professionals in particular and our frontline persons involved in the task force become increasingly more in demand so I regret that to date the meeting that you said was promised you with the task force or with the health persons that that meeting has not yet been settled. I will speak with the relevant parties and the Minister of Health is here. She has taken note and we sh I'll ensure certainly this week, at worst next week, that the conversation takes um, place. The Minister of Health will ensure that by tomorrow, the PS of Health should engage you with respect to the matter of the care packages and we see how we can move on that particular uh, matter. The female caller who called with respect to the situation in the UK, where the UK is now being impacted by a new strain of the COVID-19. Uh, virus and as a result of it a number of countries in Europe have closed their borders to movements from um, UK into their country and in the other direction from their country into the UK. I think France, Italy are among those the caller mentioned Saudi Arabia and the question she has put is whether we will follow suit. The actions that we have been taking so far has been on the advice of our health professionals. And until 
we were to be advised that this action in particular is necessary, the situation will now, which now obtains will continue. It is really a dynamic and evolving situation. And so if tomorrow the situation is such that such advice were to come forward to the cabinet, we certainly will take wise counsel in relation to this. Our first priority is to protect the persons within our jurisdictions. It is true that Jamaica, for example, has taken the decision to ban flights from the UK. I'm advised I think that should be taking place in a number of days. And I am advised that Grenada has taken that decision. So we wait and see how things would evolve with respect to the UK and the VA. I want to thank Rock, Cecil Rock for calling in and for his commendations on the, well, to the government, to the cabinet. We shall continue to do our very best to deliver on the stronger and safer future. The Deputy Prime Minister will, among the other questions which he would address, deal with the matter what is in the budget for young persons. And perhaps uh, Minister Byron can speak to some of what is there as it relates to our e-society um, agenda, as it relates to entrepreneurship, etc., etc. So those are the matters at this point. I think that were directed to me, and I have answered those questions and turn over to the deputy to continue the conversation. Thank you, Prime Minister. The Prime Minister in his budget address clearly stated that an additional $5 million would be made available to the Development Bank for young persons who have an interest in starting businesses here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Perhaps I can also add to that uh, that there is a new ministry which has responsibility for entrepreneurship and innovation. Interestingly, the minister who has responsibility for that portfolio is here with us. She would have spoken in terms of the initiatives being undertaken by that ministry to assist young persons. The caller was very specific in asking about young persons being able to get land and being able to build homes. The government through the Development Bank continues to make funds available to young persons who have an interest in doing so. However, I suppose that for one to be able to build a house, that person needs access to land. This government has substantially reduced the price that persons pay for land here in St. Kitts. Persons can get applications from sustainable development and upon making an application, provided lands are available, persons have access to land at reduced prices. I think the last thing that we did was to reduce the price to, was it, you remember the price, 350 per square foot, I think, for the first five or so thousand square foot. But I, $3 per square foot for the first 5,000 square feet, and thereafter, I think persons would pay 350 or $4 per square foot. So we have actually ensured that the price of land has substantially decreased. In terms of houses built by the National Housing Corporation, this is a government that took a decision not only to build bigger houses to accommodate persons, but we also looked at the interest rate being charged by NHC and a decision was taken that depending on your salary, that the scale the interest rate would reflect such. So you have some persons paying as well as maybe 2 or 3%, while persons who are in a better position to be able to afford it to pay, they pay a slightly higher interest rate. So these are some of the programs being offered by government. We also inherited a situation where we had close to 4,000 or so persons working on the STEP program. 
We recognize that these persons were unable to access quite a number of different services, especially from financial institutions. You go to courts, TDC, Hosford to take something on higher purchase, and you are being told that because you're working on the STEP program, they consider it to be temporary employment and as such, you aren't able to access credit. Similarly, you go to some of the financial institutions, the banks, and you have difficulty getting a loan from these banks. We have said that that must come to an end. As such, we are actively in the process of bringing persons on to the government system full-time or permanent. A committee has been put in place because we want to ensure that the process is a smooth one. The committee is doing its work, its work and within a very short period of time, we expect those persons to become permanent government employees. And sometimes a budget may not detail every single aspect of what we would like to see. However, as 2021, continues, we will continue to look at different programs that are beneficial to young persons. As I close, I also add that any individual building a home for the very first time, that individual is able to access duty-free concessions from the government. Therefore, you are able to build that house at a much cheaper cost to you than you would have done so had it been that you were paying the custom duties on the materials that you purchase in building the home. Thank you, Deputy. Thank, thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. Um, before I speak to the what is in the budget for young for young persons, I know the caller was very specific to housing and land but there's so much more that is offered within the budget for young people a whole new ministry have been offered within the budget for young persons in particular but just allow me to just share with i think it was dj marisha it was concerning the care packages and just to let him know that indeed the permanent secretary will be reaching out to him tomorrow with the names of the nurses that he would have asked for um, we apologize that it may have taken longer than you would have desired, but you will be able to get the list of names, so the Permanent Secretary will be reaching out to you tomorrow. Now, in terms of young persons, as the Deputy Prime Minister indicated, Development Bank now has another input of $5 million geared toward entrepreneurs. And yes, we are now embarking on the new Ministry of Entrepreneurship, entertainment and talent development and let us be reminded of how this ministry came into to being it was because of the work that was done by a team of young persons to bring to us a campaign that far exceeded any type of of production that we have seen in St. Kitts and Nevis in quite some time and they were able to do that with their own creative and innovative energies, recognizing that type of creative and innovative energy. The, the government decided that it was important for us to be able to harness and develop those energies. And so a new ministry is now born that is targeting the entrepreneurs entertainers and talent development most of whom work within the creative and innovative space most of whom are young persons even if we look at carnival and the virtual experience again behind the scenes are a group of young persons who are producing these these events at a level that i think far exceeded exceeds any other regional um, virtual experience that you would you you would have seen or even been able to be a part of and so what we want to do is 
allow that platform to, to for them to develop their careers to develop their businesses to develop their ideas and we're not going to do it in isolation instead we want the young persons themselves who have already been engaging to be part of the build out of this new ministry and so we're encouraging persons within the space and many of many young persons who have already begun having meetings with us to come in and help us create the ministry from the ground up so that it represents what you desire and what you wish to see with this new ministry how will it be able to service you and work not just for you but for generations to come and so I think this is a huge step for young people in general in St. Kitts and Nevis as it's the first time that we're seeing within our generations at least a brand new ministry that's being formed and this brand new ministry that's being formed with young people in mind and so um, to me, just just by the, the, the mere fact that that ministry is now within our budget and now has a budgetary uh, um, a budget itself to conduct to conduct its operations in 2021, to me that's clearly just targeting our young persons. And so I'm very much encouraged by this new ministry, and I look forward to the type of work that we will produce as we build the structures necessarily necessary to see this ministry advance. Thank you all so much for your responses. We'll go right back to the phone lines because I'm told that they are all busy. So welcome to Leadership Matters. You're live. Hello? Okay. Remember the numbers are 466-2666-662-8676-767-4765 and the international number is 1239-645-4500 and again those numbers are listed at the bottom of the screen for your convenience. The WhatsApp number is 661 Five six eight three. We'll go back to the phone lines now. Welcome to Leadership Matters. Leadership Matters. Hello. Hi, we're hearing you. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Um, this Leadership Matters. Yes, you are live on Leadership Matters. Okay. Good evening. Greetings to everybody. Happy holidays. Um, this is Carlton Carlos Tobacana here, Mount Taylor Sandy Point. I would like to congratulate the Prime Minister and a job well done for controlling the virus and keeping the economy the way it is. I mean, we could be better, but he did well. And also, I just want to let you know that my mom, they are listening to you, and she said, Hi, and good evening. All the best, everybody. All the best for the New Year. Merry Christmas. See you all for the New Year. Thank you so much. All the best to you and your mom as well. We'll Thank move you. on to the next call. Welcome to Leadership Matters. You're live. Hi. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I am calling tonight to congratulate my honorable Prime Minister. Dr. Timothy Harris and his team. Honorable Sean, good night. And I want God continue to bless you all. I'm here in quarantine at OTI. And I am happy and blessed. And no matter what they say, rules are rules. And if we love our loved ones, and love ourselves, we would be glad for this because we are protecting our children, grandchildren, and our entire federation. You all continue to do your best, and God will do the rest. May He pour your, the, His blessing upon you all and do what you have to do without fear or favor. And I said to you all, a Merry Christmas and a bright and prosperous 2021. And may God continue to lead this government forward. 
Amen. Have a blessed night. You too as well. Locked in from quarantine. Thank you so much for participating in our program. We move on to the next caller. Welcome to Leadership Matters. You're live. A, pl a pleasant good evening to the panel. I Thank want to say good evening. night to my parliamentary representative, the Honorable Sean K. Richards. Sean, I want to thank you for your leadership and for being a person. I don't know. Probably you'll be waiting on me when I call you or message you and tell you about things, and I'm never disappointed. So I want to tell you, keep it that way. And that way, you will be loved and you will reach to higher heights. I want to thank the two members of Nevis. At this moment, I am so filled with joy the way which agriculture is taking off. We have fertile land here, and we'll use it. And I got to show you, as the Minister of Nevis, I had the opportunity to work with Mr. Evelyn, uh, the Prime Minister, was doing the 1010 the cleanup at South Fires Bay. And he's like a can of Red Bull. With the kind of energy that guy brought that morning during the, the cleanup, I could see transformation in that environment, that ministry also. Lady Byron, I want to thank you for the opportunity for giving young people a platform. They are the future. The children are the future. And I know the passion you have for children because I have a personal relationship with you. So I want to thank you and I know that it will work and I know that you will listen to the person. Mr. Prime Minister, I want to commend you once again for your leadership. I mean, same kids, we're not the worst and we're not the best, but we are punching above our weight. Another thing, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, um, I've been getting some questions from persons within the tourism sector as it relates to even the taxi drivers. We are, um, you know, in La you now we send out the business license at the last of January, um, you know, if that is not paid, the uh, penalties are fixed to that. I am wondering if there is anything within to, I mean, probably release some of that for this sector or anything in place moving forward. Also, a request was made over a month now to have a meeting with the drivers. And up until this day, we haven't heard from the relevant authorities. And we need to know what's going on because, I mean, we are in support of the government, but we just need a conversation. So I just want to wish everybody there a Merry Christmas. And leadership really matters because in this time, the captain is doing good. They ask, doctor, how you get it to keep on doing it, and we'll see you for the next year. Thank you so much much for participating in tonight's program. We move on to the next call. Welcome to Leadership Matters. Hello? Hello? Okay, I'm going to have to ask you to just speak up a, uh, just a bit so we can hear you more clearly. Okay, I'm on? Yes, you're live. Oh, good night, good night, good night. This is Bobby Clayton. I'm happy to be a part of Leadership Matters. Uh, this is the last program for the year. And let me start on by saying season greetings to the panelists. And Ms. Brian, you have been doing a good job in the absence of Valentine. Oh dear. We lost that caller. He had just started making his point. Thank you so much for your kind words, sir. And you can try to get back in again. Um, hopefully you do. It was unfortunate you had to get disconnected. We'll take another call. Welcome to Leadership Matters. Okay, we don't have any more calls at this time, uh, but what we're going to do is take a break because we have a number of WhatsApp messages. We'll come back. Those will be put to the panelists, and in their wrap-up, they will address your questions and concerns, and as well as those that came in via WhatsApp. So the persons who are communicating with us via that platform need not be concerned. So we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll have uh, answers and wrap-up. As we get ready to serve, it is important that we improve our vehicles to ensure the safety of our guests 
on ourselves. Outfit your vehicle with appropriate dividers to separate driver from passenger. Plexiglass or Velcro plastic divider may be used. Have a minimum of two hand sanitizers, one for you and one for your guests. Always carry extra mask and disinfectant in your vehicle and post signs to remind passengers to use hand sanitizers and wear their mask and follow social distancing protocols. When providing a service, it is important that the hands of the passengers are sanitized before entering the vehicle. Remember, a mask must always be worn by all occupants of the vehicle for the duration of the trip. At the end of the trip, remember to wish your passengers a good day. Ensure they have left no personal items behind and sanitize their hands. Once you have completed your trip, remember to sanitize your hands and your vehicle. Seats must be disinfected and all high-touch areas, such as doors and seat handles, must be sanitized before your next trip. Let's do all we can to keep ourselves and our visitors safe. Thanks to the nation's unified response, the spread of COVID-19 has been contained. St. Kitts and Nevis, therefore, announces the opening of their border on October 31st, 2020. The success of this strategy requires effort on everyone's part. People from all walks of life must keep practicing social distancing. Maintain a separation of six feet or two meters indoors and three to four feet or one meter outdoors. If this isn't possible, masks must be properly worn. Businesses can provide hand sanitizer, conduct temperature checks, record customers' contact information, and manage crowds. Clean and sanitize high-touch areas regularly. Dividers or staggered seating can be used to maintain proper social distance. This protects workers and customers and prevents the spread of disease. We all have an individual and collective responsibility to avoid large social gatherings. These types of gatherings are deemed as super spreader events. Taking disease prevention seriously will enable a worry-free return to normal life. We are all in this together. And we all have a part to play to keep our island COVID free. Play your part and stay safe and healthy. Our borders will soon be reopened. Get ready. So what are you doing to keep saying it's COVID free? touching the mask, clean hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. Take the mask and inspect it for tears or holes. Orient which side is the top side where the metal strip is. Ensure the proper side of the mask faces outwards, the colored side. Place the mask to your face. Pinch the metal strip or stiff edge of the mask so it molds to the shape of your nose. Pull down the mask's bottom so it covers your mouth and your chin. After use, take off the mask. Remove the elastic loops from behind the ears while keeping the mask away from your face and clothes to avoid touching potentially contaminated surfaces of the mask. Discard the mask in a closed bin immediately after use.
Welcome back to Leadership Matters. And as we bring our program to a close, we had several messages sent to us via WhatsApp. I have already put those questions and concerns to the panelists. So just to give you an overview of what they are, I read them to the panelists in their entirety, but in the interest of time, I'll summarize so people are aware what is being addressed. Someone asked why Public Works has been, is going to be asked to undertake work on the training school. Another question asked about persons who have been approved for the $500 and when they will receive it. We had a question about the groundbreaking ceremony today and there's someone interested, I would assume a business owner, interested in participating in that project. I wanted to know how they could get to do business with that project. We have a question from someone who is a national living abroad. They, their mother passed away and they are planning with other family members to return to the Federation. However, they are asking if there's any way, given the situation, that the 14-day quarantine, if it's absolutely mandatory that they enter 14-day quarantine, or if they could be provided with an escort during their quarantine time to travel to the funeral to ensure proper social distancing and precautions are taken. We have a question about whether or not the health network system will also include the Nevis, Nevis health system. We have a question that has asked if a capital project can be undertaken to renovate Central Bastyr, and they are asking for vendors to be moved from the sidewalk and for the sidewalks to be made handicap friendly. We have a question from someone who said that they were laid off since April and they are still unemployed and wanted to know if any payments would be made to persons like themselves in December and if not when. We have someone inquiring about severance payments and when they can expect to receive those. We have someone who has asked if local contractors will be given an opportunity to tender on the new Bastia High School project. I'm not certain if I said that one already. And finally, oh, I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. So like I said, quite a number of questions coming in. <laughs> it's, I kind of almost lost track. There are quite a number of questions coming in. I saw we put all of them to our panelists and they will try their best to address all of your concerns. So, given all of these exciting questions and concerns, who would like to go first? With respect to the, the question posed regarding severance payment, the severance payment fund had been undercapitalized. That is, we inherited a fund in which there was not enough monies to be able to meet the commitments, the obligations as they arise. This year has been an extraordinarily, an extraordinarily challenging year for the fund in that we had thousands of persons who were put out of work as a consequence of COVID-19. That being said, we have received about 2,000 plus applications to the fund and my understanding is that the Ministry of Labor has so far processed the majority of the claims received. There have been some delays and some of those delays were due to the fact that there was an incomplete data set for the employees. That is, some employers may not have paid over the relevant contributions to the Social Security Board. And if your money's contributions are not paid into the fund, the Social Security cannot pay you. That is why in the budget address, I made an appeal to employers to be sensitive and in fact beyond sensitivity to comply with the law, which requires that all withdrawals from an employee's pay should be appropriately sent on to the relevant authority, and in this case, Social Security. The government has taken a major step to invest just over $11 million so far to help the Severance Fund to meet its obligations 
to the employees. Additionally, in the 2021 budget, I've set aside $7 million, bringing the total to $18 million that this government would have put to finance the anticipated demands on the fund as a result of COVID-19. And indeed, there were some persons who had severance claims pending before COVID-19 came on board. So we are working very hard to get rid of any backlogs. My understanding is that the staff of the Department of Labor, they are working overtime, they work even on weekends, and we want to encourage the Labor Commissioner, Ms. James, to continue to work hard to ensure that by early next year, we will be way ahead of the game. The government will also and has already commissioned an actuarial study of the fund to make a determination what is the level of capitalization required to ensure that resources are always there to meet the demands of the fund. With respect to the question for Central Bass, there, yes, everywhere, there are capital projects being undertaken and to be undertaken because we have an inclusive government and we look at the country as a whole. Perhaps when the Minister of Public Infrastructure speaks, he will give more detail. But in his presentation tonight, he also spoke about the proposal which involved development of the coastal area of Irish Town, Fort Lands, etc., and of course New Guinea. So three specific coastal areas are a mark in 2021 for action. We have spoken, and the Deputy Prime Minister in his opening remarks did not go into detail with respect to the portfolio of um, urban development. And under that program, some specific initiatives would be taken to make Bastia the cleanliest and perhaps the most beautiful city in the world. So things are going to unfold, and as we get closer to implementation, you will get more information with respect to these. We call also part of our mandate is to clear the slums area in Bastia, in Irish Town, in George Street, wherever they are. We want to make Bastia to be an appealing place for all to live and for persons to do business and, of course, to raise their children. So that is a broad view in which we are engaged. So I've dealt with the capital projects, the severance fund, the, well, those who are interested in the project I talk about, the Doors Residential Development, it's a private project which the government has worked in partnership with TDC, providing the lands, providing special concessions in terms of the transfer tax to ensure that the project can come to realization. All contractors, any service provider with an interest in the project can contact the relevant parties at the TDC group of companies this morning, two names were mentioned. One comes quickly to mind. Dan Ben Camper was one of them who had had a lot to do in getting the project together. Of course, the chairman, Mr. Earl Kelly, those would be some of the persons, I suspect, who can provide more information regarding the opportunities that will come. With respect to the PAP program, that is the $500 a month assistance which my government has been providing for this year, we are expected that we would have spent $31.1 million to assist those persons whose income had fallen below the target of $3,000 per month. Payments are made every month on the said date set aside for the payment of government salaries. For this month, December, 
pop checks would have been available on the 17th, the same day that would have been government payday. If it is that you would have collected your check or you would normally collect your check from the government treasury, I would advise that you check there. If it is that the payment go to your account, then you should check your bank. If there is a discrepancy, I would then recommend you get in touch with the Ministry of Sustainable Development and you may clear to them what your concern is with respect to the, the PAP or the $500 monthly assistance by the government. In January, of course, and the government payday, again, the PAP payments will take place. Drivers, sir. On the matter with respect to the taxi drivers, I will check with the controller of Inland Revenue, Mr. Edward Giff, and if you would remind me, Jackie, we can make a statement with respect to that. We would want to have good compliance, but where there are specific circumstances preventing persons from complying with the requirement in terms of the tax, the tax laws, the government, of course, is a very compassionate, a very sensitive one, and we are aware that this has been a difficult time for taxi operators. We will do the best that we can, but let me check on it, get the facts from the control of customs. His department has been mentioned, and by tomorrow we can issue um, a statement with respect to what the the situation is at the with respect to that particular um, matter. Okay. I just to be certain, did you speak to the person who said they were employed in to the tourism sector and unemployed and since April? Any any words of advice you can give to that person? I know that was a severance matter. Okay. Yeah, I think that but was they weren't specific, to the so it could have been interpreted question. as such. But what we would say generally to people who are unemployed, and if you were, for example, in the hotel sector until the arrivals reach a certain threshold, it may not be reasonable to expect that every hotel worker will get back that job. The question is, can you and are you willing to do other things to make a living? And if you are, then what are your interests? The Labor Department has a unit that deals with helping to match persons with jobs. So my advice to that person will be go see the Labor Commissioner or one of her employees and to seek to gather from them where vacancies are. At the same time, if you have particular skills, some of which you might have even developed, and your job in the hotel, and if you can put them into a business venture, I am almost certain that the development bank might be able to assist under the small business development. But I would want to encourage persons, keep an open mind. A job is a job. And it is better to be at work than not to be at work. And so any opportunity, any alternative that would give you an honest day's pay for an honest day's work is one that you should, you should take into consideration. Agencies that can assist. We have a number of health-related questions and public works-related questions. So the Deputy Prime Minister or... I'll take the two questions because I think mine's are okay, quick man. enough to answer. Yeah, <laughs> and then I will allow the. Okay. I know um, the, the question concerning the 14 day quarantine as it relates to the individual or the family who was considering coming home for the funeral. What I can say is that our 14 day quarantine is mandatory. There are no exceptions to the quarantine. If you want to be 
provided with I know part of the question said that you are you're not aware of or you're being given conflicting information as it relates to our travel protocol what I would suggest that you do is if you log on to our covid 19.gov.kn webpage there is a tab at the top of the page travel protocols that tab will lead you to the entire booklet which provides you with our travel protocols for when entering St. Kitts and Nevis. You can also call 869-762-0238 to share your concerns and questions and, prov and be provided with feedback or you can email COVID-19 task force at gov.kn to, to relay your concerns and to be provided with feedback. But our 14 day quarantine, we are abiding by these quarantine protocols and there have been no shift in terms of um, the, 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 the time that you spend or if it's shortened for any reason. So outside of just being told that this is the hard facts you can actually speak to someone on the task force who can give you more specific and relevant information as it relates to our travel protocol or you can log on to covid19.gov.kn to receive to be able to read more information on our travel protocols in terms of the HIS system, someone was asking whether that will be implemented in Nevis. Indeed, it will be implemented at the Alexandria Hospital because we do recognize, yes, that there are persons from Nevis who will travel over to St. Kitts to be treated within our health facilities here in St. Kitts. And the reverse happens as well. And so, yes, the information will also be, HIS system will also be implemented in Nevis so that the information is shared between between both islands and I think that were that would those were the two questions that yes. were health related thank you so much there are a number of questions which have been referred to me firstly let me go back to one of the questions asked by granny earlier he indicated uh, that perhaps the old health center in the st. Peter's area it can be used upon the completion of the new health center as a sub post office. That is an idea that the ministry will look at. In speaking of the post offices earlier, of course it is our intention to look at all of the sub post offices, to look at areas which perhaps are not currently being served and to see how we can serve those areas. I know for example we have spoken about how we can extend the pass or post service to some of the other areas in St. Kitts. As it is, most persons would have to go to the general post office to collect parcels, but we have space at a number of the other post offices which perhaps can be utilized for such service. On the matter of the police training school, the police training school is a project that this government would have inherited. As a matter of fact, when we came into office, the project had been stalled. I think it has been stalled to the extent that even in terms of the funding eh, that the then government was supposed to be receiving for that particular project, eh, that the funds are no longer available. However, this government has taken a decision to pursue the project. Eh, the project, as I said, it has started and it's actually a waste of resources to have it there doing absolutely nothing. There have been various issues with that particular project in terms of the contractor who was building the project, funding, etc. I think what is most important is the way forward for the project and a decision has been taken to get Public Works to become involved in the project so that the project can be completed and actually benefit the security forces here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. As we look to ensure that our police officers are properly trained, uh, that complex we do believe will uh, do a very good job in terms of us having the necessary resources, a proper facility for the police officers to undertake training. 
Currently, the officers are trained at the police training complex located in the Newtown area. Their issues with space and other concerns relative to uh, that building being able to house the number of police officers we train and also giving them the space to do the necessary training. We have been a very responsive government in terms of dealing with the crime situation here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis and ensuring that the police training complex is completed would only add to the arsenal that the government has before it in putting or giving the necessary resources to the police to ensure that not only they are comfortable but also to ensure that they are properly trained to undertake their duties in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Someone asked a question as to whether or not local contractors will be given an opportunity to tender for the New Bastia High School. Indeed, that is the case. Initially, when the New Bastia High School was conceptualized, it was supposed to be a build and a design and build a contract. That has since changed so that local contractors can bid for different aspects of the project. The intention is not to have just one single contractor build uh, that institution. Different phases of the project will be tendered so that a number of different contractors is given an opportunity to build the New Bastia High School. So whether it is the plumbing, the electrical, the AC, the painting, the excavation of the site, local contractors will all have an opportunity to bid on that project. To the caller who wanted to know about projects for Central Bastille, the Prime Minister to some extent has already addressed uh, that question. However, I will add it to what he has stated. The current representative for Central Bastille, the Honorable General Powell, has spoken about not only the revitalization and the renewal of Central Bastier, but he has been specific in terms of some of the projects that he would want to see being undertaken in Central Bastier. He has spoken about a boardwalk, for example. Now, for that boardwalk to be constructed, it is important that first we undertake the sea defense project that I spoke to earlier. With regards to vendors, that is an issue that urban development has been looking at. I can say to you that space has been identified in North Independence Square area for some of the mobile vendors to be relocated. Additionally, there is a project with the intention of looking at the public market to see how the public market can be expanded and improve to be able to support more vendors. One school of thought, for example, is to have an upstairs facility so that depending on what type of craft it is you're vending, you can be located upstairs and some persons can be located on the downstairs. The Minister of Tourism has also put forward a project which hasn't been funded as yet because the project needs to be designed and that is one which looks at the ferry terminal area and the boots there. The intention is to take a look at it, redesign the boots, etc., make down there more user-friendly, make it environmentally more appealing to persons, etc. Uh, that project, we expect that during the course of 2021 would have some significant work done on it and perhaps maybe in 2022 we can actually see that project come on stream. And who knows, maybe even before 2022 because sometimes depending on a particular project, the importance of the project and government having the necessary resources, uh, those projects can be given additional funding throughout the course of any particular fiscal year. So I have addressed the street vending, I have addressed um, some of the projects for the Central Bastille. I also know that with regards to Central Bastille, uh, there is a proposal to look at the current legislation to determine in what way some of the abandoned buildings, etc., uh, which persons are not paying any taxes for and 
as such those buildings have more or less become a public nuisance to determine how those buildings can be put to better use. And similarly, in Sandy Point, the same thing is being proposed. Jackie, I do hope that I have answered all of the questions which were put before me. However, before I close, I have been reminded that the police station in Sandy Point, which I referenced earlier at a cost of $6.0 million, isn't just for the utilization of police officers. You are going to have magistrate courts located there, fire services will be located there, customs services will also be located there. And in terms of uh, that particular facility, it's quite extensive in terms of some of the services uh, that will be offered. When I did my last tour, for example, it was pointed out that when you go to the magistrate court there, you have an area where the lawyers and their clients uh, can sit, they can discuss, there will be a library area. And so you have a number of different services that will be offered in that one facility. The second thing that I wish to point out is to the gentleman who called earlier and asked about opportunities for young persons relative to housing, is that NHC has also expanded its portfolio to the extent that it is now building units for single individual studio, what you would call studio units. So for a young person who's just starting out, who has no family, and is in need of a house from NHC, you have such houses already being put into the housing lot here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis by NHC. In particular, if you go to St. Peter's, there are such homes already built there, and I suppose occupied by persons. Well, that was quite impressive, ladies and gentlemen. I think you addressed all the questions and concerns that were put to you. So thank you so much for tackling the issues head on. And just to mention a major event happening within the Ministry of National Security at the end of this month will be the ground, the opening ceremony rather, for the headquarters for the Explorers Clubs. And we know we have over 1,000 of our young people who are involved in that movement. So they will be moving, having the opening ceremony for that on December 31st at 10 a.m. If there's anyone who would like to attend, of course, all the health protocols will be in place. So you probably can may contact the coordinator, Inspector Rosemary Alice Joseph, if you are interested in finding out how you can do that. So before we close off the program, we're going to have the brain behind the program, Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris, who has been meeting with you via this forum all year round. He's going to make his closing remarks and then we will bid you adieu until 2021. Thank you very much, Jackie. Let me start by thanking you for so ably taking charge of this program and doing an excellent job of it. I also want to commend the support staff at ZIZ they have been doing an excellent job also in ensuring that we stay in touch with the people and we answer the accountability obligation of the governments to its citizens. I want to thank the thousands of persons who each week tune in to the program across the various social media outlets where we capture the data we have every week no less than average of 10,000 persons participating and viewing the program I'm advised by the technicians at ZIZ. So I want to say thank you very much for that support. The high level of interest is an indication that this program is an important one and one which we shall continue in the new year. My final word would be to extend again all the very best to every citizen and every resident at this our Christmas season and the hope at this time of the year we remember our loved ones families friends supporters 
but we pay particular care and attention for the elderly, the shut-in, and those, of course, who need special support. Christmas reminds us it is a period to serve others and, of course, to ensure that we acknowledge the supremacy of God in our lives. Here in St. Kitts and Nevis, we have so many things to be grateful for, so many things to be positive about, even as we listen to some of the calls that have come in and we hear what is unfolding abroad in the United Kingdom, in the United States of America, in Europe, our neighbors within the region, we have to feel that we, the good people of St. Kitts and Nevis, are incredibly blessed. And so at Christmas, let's give thanks to the Creator for helping us and for taking us this far. I am very optimistic about 2021, and so I want to wish all a very happy new year when it comes. I thank you, and let me also thank the Deputy Prime Minister for being part of this program very early when we started. He was there, I think, on the very first program with me, so I want to thank him, and he's closing tonight with me. I want to thank um, Minister Keela Byron Nisbet for being part. We, she had several questions which meant that it was good to have brought her in on the panel tonight. She is no stranger. She has been here before. So again, God's blessing to all and I'll turn over to Deputy and then Akila to give their own final, final word. Thank you to the Prime Minister for having me here this evening. In closing, I must say thanks also to the good people of Sandy Point for restoring their vote of confidence in me again on the 5th of June of this year. As we proceed towards the end of the year 2020, I wish you utmost success for the Christmas season. This year in particular, I think we have the opportunity to do things differently for Christmas. COVID has given us the opportunity to share with each other, not only as family members, but as a community and as citizens of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. We had a very good example of that on Sunday of this week when a number of citizens in Sandy Point spearheaded an effort to provide a young lady, Rhonda Warner, with a new home. Persons from the Sandy Point community and beyond the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis would have participated in that effort and would have given of their money would have given of their time and would have given of different services to ensure that that young lady and her family are able to live in a much more comfortable environment. For me, that represents the true spirit of Christmas. I said to persons here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, that the spirit of giving isn't necessarily about giving money, but find somewhere to share with other persons. Share your time, share your expertise. Give persons, even if it is an encouraging word. If you have students, children living amongst you, be a good example for those persons. In whatever way you can give, is someone something for this Christmas season and beyond, I encourage you to do so. As we approach the year 2021, let us approach it with a mindset uh, that with each day there is hope. And let us look for all of the opportunities which abound here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Take advantage of those opportunities. Let us continue to build this federation so that we are able to enjoy it. United we stand, divided we fall. Team unity will continue to provide the necessary resources 
and the necessary support to all of our people so that they can develop to their fullest potential. However, it is up to you to take advantage of those opportunities. Again, a blessed Christmas to each and everyone and all of the best for the year 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much again, Prime Minister, for inviting me to be a part of Leadership Matters. It's always a pleasure to be here and to be able to share with the persons viewing and listening. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the good people of St. Christopher Three for lending me your vote on June 5th, as I would have asked, and giving me the opportunity to serve as your representative in Parliament. It was indeed a pleasure today as I went through the constituency providing the young persons with their Christmas gifts and treats and being able to meet with families. You always welcome me warmly. You have done it from the very beginning and you continue to do so. And that's why I always am willing to give to be of service to you and will continue to do so. I also want to thank the staff of the ministries which I have the privilege to lead and that is the Ministry of Health and the Ministries of Information and Communications Technologies, Entrepreneurship, Entertainment and Talent Development. The staff, everyone have welcomed me and have been, been very good support over the past six months and I am truly grateful to be able to be working with such a great team of individuals. To all of our frontline workers, nurses, doctors and even the police officers, I want to thank you for the hard work that you continue to do. In terms of the police officers, we've been asking you to go beyond just securing us and we've been asking you to operate in a new norm. Some of the times asking you to police us as we continue to work towards saving lives and we thank you for the work that you continue to do. So I would also like to thank ZIZ as well and the team at ZIZ. You guys work extremely hard, always willing to do whatever you can to make sure that the people of St. Kitts and Nevis are kept informed and up to date. At this time again, I want to take the opportunity to remind persons the protocols are in place for a reason. And as you celebrate the season, we want you to celebrate it in a new norm, remembering always to wear your mask, to wash your hands, to, to social distancing and just be able to make sure you keep yourselves, your families, your communities safe. It is about saving lives. Once we're able to save lives, then livelihoods will be maintained. Livelihoods would be able to be saved as well. And so we want persons to focus right now on saving lives as we have been doing. The task force have been doing an incredible job in being able to make sure that we are safe and we have to do our part. The all of society approach is what worked so thus far and we have to continue on that same path. Like Queenie J said, we're all in this together and once we continue to remember that we're doing this together, then we'll be able to get through this together as well. As the Prime, just like the Prime Minister, I too am optimistic about 2021. I do believe we'll be able to get past COVID-19 and once we do that, then we'll be able to see our economy continue to flourish and grow. We were on a path just before COVID-19 and I am optimistic that we will go we'll get back to that path that we were on and maybe even surpass it. And finally, I just want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. Remember the reason for the season. God sent his only son to save us and he lived a life of service and an example that we need to follow. We need to be able to remember service to others just as much as we think about ourselves. We need to remember at this time to give. And as the Deputy Prime Minister said, it's not always, it doesn't always have to be monetary. We can give of our time. We could just give a listening ear to someone and it means so much to them. And so take the opportunity to see how, how you can be of service to someone else in small ways, in large ways. It doesn't matter just as long as you're serving others and being the, being using the example of Jesus Christ and the way that he lived on earth. 
this is the time when he was born so it's an opportunity for us to reflect on his life and to be able to make sure that we too are living up to what he would have expected us to and so with those few words i say a very very merry christmas to everyone viewing i look forward to seeing you in 2021 i look forward to being here with you in 2021 as we continue to share with you what our team unity government continues to bring to saint kitts and nevis and where we plan to take St. Kitts and Nevis in 2021 and beyond. So, Merry Christmas to everyone. And finally, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your kind words. It was not only my pleasure to have been able to participate in this program, but truly an honor. I want to thank all the persons who listen, view, and participate in the program every time it is aired. And to those who have given me feedback, Thank you so much for your kind and encouraging words. I'm truly amazed by the amount of people who listen to this program. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all of you. And may God continue to richly bless you in 2021 and beyond. Take care.